Did you know that Amazon added the entire market cap of American Express on Monday this week and the entire market cap of UPS last week? We're about one week away from the beginning of the reporting season for the second quarter earnings and the markets truly are priced for perfection here. Especially given what's happening around coronavirus, rising bankruptcies, credit defaults and record high unemployment. So today I want to talk about what you can expect in the stock market for the summer and what the potential risks for your portfolios are. Welcome back to the channel. My name is Martin Zeman and for those of you that are new here, uh, welcome. It's great to see you. I'm a former investment banker, trader and a hedge fund manager. And today I want to talk about the current state of the markets. So we've entered the summer season with volumes down about 30 percent right now. But um, what I really want to talk about is the dominance of the tech sector in the markets. Um, let me show you a couple of charts to kind of demonstrate my point. The top chart here shows the combined weight in the S&P 500 of its top five components, which are Apple, Amazon, Microsoft, Facebook and Google. So we're currently at 22 percent. If you look at the same stocks in the Nasdaq index, we are at 45 percent, which is just shy of the 47 percent high that we had in um, October 2018. So the question is, is this high or is this low? If you look back to the dot-com bubble, the top five components in the S&P 500 were at 17%. So what does that mean in terms of valuations for these stocks? If you look at the S&P 500 right now, we're trading at a 20 multiple of forward earnings, which is pretty high historically. Now, if you look at the tech sector uh, separately, we're trading at a 31 multiple. So bulls will tell you that the 50% pickup in terms of valuations is justified, especially given the growth trajectory of these companies. But to me, there has to be a limitation in terms of uh, weights of these companies, especially given the earnings yield. Now, the earnings yield is, is how much you can expect to earn per share. And right now, if you look at the 31 multiple for the tech sector, the earnings yield is basically 3.3%. So that's not a lot of pickup over risk-free assets right here. So how do you explain these valuations? Uh, one of the reasons that's been put forward is that a lot of the stimulus money has found its way into the stock market through increased activity in uh, brokerage trading. Now let me show you a chart that kind of demonstrates a little bit of that. If you look at the bottom, you'll see the four main uh, brokerage companies, uh, which is Ameritrade, uh, E-Trade, Schwab and Interactive Brokers. And clearly on the right side, you see the huge increase in volume in uh, quarterly darts. Now darts stands for daily average revenue trades. So that's basically the amount of trades that generate any revenue for the brokerages. And clearly there's been a uh, more than 100% increase in the second quarter relative to what we have seen uh, you know, of the last few years. So now what about the second quarter results? Uh, the reporting season starts in about a week. And uh, given that most services and manufacturing uh, sectors were shut down during the second quarter, uh, the expectations are pretty low. Uh, right now, the forecast uh, shows a 44% expectation decline relative to the second quarter of 2019. But um, it's more like 60%, I think, in terms of uh, what's realistic. But I think the question is not what's going to happen in terms of uh, the results, but in terms of guidance for the next year. And uh, let me show you another chart that's kind of interesting and that shows uh, the expectation that the investment community has for, um, for the next year. This chart here shows the uh, results of a client survey that Citibank conducted in June. And uh, essentially they asked their clients whether the current 2021 EPS estimate of $164 is too high or too low or relatively accurate. Uh, so basically asking the, uh, the, the respondents to say, hey, um, given current valuations and what the market's pricing, do you think the estimates for next year results are too high? And as you can see, 75% of the respondents um, said that the result expectations are way too high. So let's talk about how these valuations relate to the current expectations and the potential risks we might see later this summer and into the fall. Um, I think there's a couple of risks that the market is underpricing here. And the first one of them is a potential Joe Biden victory later this year and the Democrats taking over the Senate as well. Uh, I think one of the first things that will likely happen into 2021 is that the corporate tax rate will go back up from 21% likely to somewhere around 26%. And there will clearly be a few sectors that will do uh, less well uh, in a democratic administration. And that's going to be chemicals, energy, the bank sector, um, auto, and potentially even tech. And on the other hand, you're going to have a few sectors that will do better, which is um, the clean energy or the infrastructure sectors. 
Uh, but I think the market is not pricing this risk properly yet. The second thing that I think the market is not focusing on enough is the CARES Act expiry that's coming up at the end of July. So we have this extra $600 per week unemployment enhanced benefit that most people uh, have been receiving for the last couple of months. But that's going to expire in, uh, at the end of the month. And um, the Congress is still on holiday. Uh, so we'll have uh, a really short amount of time at the end of July to kind of race away from that cliff edge of um, that extra bump that most consumers were, were getting. And don't forget that the House is going to recess on August 3rd and the Senate a week later. So there's really not much time um, to renegotiate anything uh, for the consumers here. In fact, there was an article published a couple of days ago uh, highlighting that how the Trump administration wants more of a payroll tax cuts, liability reform, tax incentives for businesses and potential back to work bonuses as kind of the backbone of the new stimulus package as opposed to more payments to individuals. So I think that's another risk that the, the market is not pricing uh, properly here. Uh, we've had this huge bump uh, for consumers in the second quarter, and I think that's going to disappear in the third quarter because I don't see the, how um, the Republicans and the Democrats might agree on a, on a new package uh, that would um, put directly money uh, in the pockets of consumers. The jury is still obviously out on the second quarter results, um, but to conclude this little update on the markets, I want to talk about uh, kind of two potential tailwinds for the markets in the second half of this year. Uh, the first one is the unprecedented amount of money that's now sitting in money market funds. Now, in, in any recession or a big market sell-off, uh, money gets pulled out of risky assets and, and gets parked in these money market funds just sitting in cash. But right now, there's $5 trillion sitting in these accounts uh, waiting to be deployed. So that's one potential tailwind in the second half of 2020. And the second is obviously um, you know, the actor in the market that we haven't mentioned yet, and that's the Fed. Now, remember back in March when Fed announced its unprecedented measures, really, uh, it was a bit similar to what the, what the ECB did in 2012 during the European periphery crisis when Draghi came out and uh, effectively announced uh, support in a form of we'll do anything it takes. And um, what the Fed did is, is really unprecedented this year, you know, including the willingness to buy high yield paper, uh, support a lot of zombie companies and really changed the nature of how markets function. I, I think we would have seen a much deeper and prolonged sell off if the Fed didn't step in, in uh, to such a degree. So, you know, it's hard to argue with so much support and, and uh, such a large bid below current levels. Uh, but I think the jury's still out equally on uh, whether this is a, a, a truly a, a true V-shaped recovery or simply a better market rally. So thanks for listening. Thanks for um, uh, watching. Um, I will post more updates as we enter the, the reporting season. Uh, leave a comment on uh, what you expect over the summer and um, how you position for, you know, for arguably more volatility that should be coming into the markets. And I'll see you in the next video.